In this video, I want to take a look at container fields in FileMaker Pro and how they differ in FileMaker Go. I also want to address the issue of remote containers, or as FileMaker refers to these, these are container fields set with external or remote storage. Now back with the release of FileMaker 12, the engineering teams of FileMaker decided to greatly improve the capabilities of the container field. Historically, before that, container fields had always stored their information internally inside the database file structure itself. So as users would add images, movies, PDFs, Word documents to a container field, all those items would actually be added and stored inside the FileMaker database file itself. As users would add new documents, new PDFs, or new Word files, or even movies, the FileMaker files themselves would rapidly grow. In fact, the FileMaker files would easily become many multiple gigabytes in size. The problem with this is that it adversely affects the performance of the database. The FileMaker server had to work harder to actually make the backups, and it actually slows the server down. There's a lot of good reasons to keep a FileMaker file as small and as nimble as possible and not bloat the size of the file with a lot of digital documents. Now historically, we've solved this problem with the use of Supercontainer, which is a third-party technology from 360 Works. Now Supercontainer works great, but when FileMaker 12 came out, the engineers at FileMaker built in the capabilities to FileMaker to remotely store the documents outside of the FileMaker database which effectively mimic the capabilities of Supercontainer. Now my team has been involved with the conceptualization and testing of this technology since the early days even before FileMaker 12 shipped and the engineers at FileMaker always called this remote containers. Now since that time the marketing folks at FileMaker rechristened this containers with external or remote storage. But to the folks who've worked on this for many, many years, this will always be known as remote containers. And so if you hear me refer to it that way, I do apologize. So here I have a container field, and I can click the options here. And I can specify under the storage tab that the data is stored externally from the FileMaker file. Now I can select either secure storage, where the external files are encrypted, or for less important documents, you can select Open Storage. So here you have an actual path name on the computer where the documents will be stored. In the case of the demo, where I would normally have a single FileMaker file here with the images contained directly inside, potentially making this file very large, FileMaker has created a folder externally which contains all the supporting digital documents that are stored in the container fields. I can actually open this folder up, open the contacts, and actually see the images that we stored right here. So here's the actual image that we stored. The issue comes in with FileMaker Go. FileMaker Go does not have the ability to store the container separately next to the file. So here we have FileMaker Pro running on this desktop computer. It could be a Mac or Windows, it doesn't matter and we have a locally stored database file right here and the remote container files are stored right next to it. This actually works equally well on FileMaker server. If FileMaker Go users are accessing a database from a FileMaker server, then FileMaker Go fully supports remote containers because the containers are actually being stored on the FileMaker server. The database is on the FileMaker server the digital documents are being stored right next to it on the FileMaker server, and the FileMaker server is managing all that. However, at the local level, if you have a local database installed on that device, which runs very rapidly, FileMaker Go is not going to be able to support remote containers. We're going to need to take a look at how to convert a FileMaker file with a remote container into a self-contained file that will operate cleanly with FileMaker Go. So first off, I'm going to open our FileMaker file in FileMaker Pro. I can see that we have the file. 
I can see that we have a container field. I have verified previously that this is indeed a remote container. However, if I just move this file directly to my iPhone or iPad for FileMaker Go, say for example I use Dropbox, none of our container data will come along with the file. If you want to ensure that your digital media and digital documents come along with your FileMaker file, you need to go through the process of saving the FileMaker file as a new self-contained file. So next I'm going to give it a new name, preferably something with the word self-contained, and that's optional, but it just helps me keep this straight in my head. Additionally, there's an option right down here at the bottom, which is saving a self-contained copy of the file. This will actually make a single file and it will take all the remote container documents and embed them back into the database. Here we can see our new self-contained database right here. I'm going to go ahead and open up the file. I'm going to notice that these files look identical, but I'm going to go ahead and close both files and I'm going to compare the file size of both these documents. Here's the first one. You can see its size. It's around a megabyte. The self-contained file if I get information on it, is much larger. Now if you have a database with lots of users and lots of documents, doing this is not such a great idea. However, if it's mission critical that you want to have a local database running with your documents on your iPhone or iPad using FileMaker Go, then this is the way you have to go. So now I'm going to take our new self-contained file and move that using Dropbox to my iPhone or iPad. I've gone to Dropbox on my iPad and I've selected the file that is still using Remote Container. Now Dropbox by default doesn't know what to do with a FileMaker file so I click the icon in the upper right hand corner and I'm going to tell it to open it in FileMaker Go. The file is now transferred to FileMaker Go and as we expect we don't have access to this image because FileMaker Go does not support remote containers that are local on the device. Let's go ahead and go back to Dropbox and now we're going to select the self-contained file. Once again, Dropbox doesn't really know what to do with the document. By clicking the upper right hand corner, we'll be presented with the option of opening it in FileMaker Go. Now we open the file and bingo, we have access to the internal container information stored inside the file. So that's how we take a file that was using remote containers and accessing it locally on an iPhone or iPad. Save it as a self-contained standalone file for your iPhone or iPad for use with FileMaker Go 13. As a final note for users who consolidate the remote containers into a FileMaker file for local use on an iOS device, if you want to reverse this process and take your local file back out to a FileMaker server and then redeploy those containers back out to external storage or aka back out to remote containers, first you're going to move your database back to the FileMaker server, then using FileMaker Pro to log on to that hosted database, you're going to go into field definitions, then you're going to select on container, then go back into the options for each container field, and specify the option that the container is stored either open storage or secure storage but the storage for it is made externally. You have to do this manually. There's no automatic process for the internally stored containers to be redeployed externally. This is a manual process that you will have to do. But doing so will greatly improve the performance of your FileMaker server if you're using a lot of documents in those containers.